Hello everyone and welcome to a new weekly vlog. Saying that though, it's definitely not going to be a weekly reading vlog this week because it's currently Friday and I haven't really read anything throughout this whole week. If you've seen my TBR video for February, you'll know that in the first week of February, Polathon is happening, which is a polar fantasy readathon hosted by Jade from JD Ray Reads. I have five books, I think, on my Polathon TBR. So far, I've only started one of them and that one is Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I am actually buddy reading this with Chloe so I will leave all of her details down below for you guys. Please check her out. She is just the nicest human. But I saw in her TBR that she mentioned this and she watched mine and saw that I mentioned it and we decided to do a little buddy read. So every day this week I've been reading a section of about 60 pages I'd say and I'm currently on page 218. So about halfway I'd say yeah definitely around halfway. So this is a survival story in a snowy setting but not only that it's also a fantasy book which is something I would never normally put together but I will just read you the first line because I went into this thinking it was just going to be an adventure story but it literally says I stretched my hands over the dragon eggs focusing all my concentration on the indigo shells and murmured the incantation. The air rippled and shimmered. So definitely a fantasy book which I wasn't expecting going into this. The synopsis doesn't really mention that at all and I feel like I would have picked this up so much sooner if I'd have known that there was a lot of fantasy elements in this one especially dragons. So in this one we follow a girl named Kamzin who is desperate to become the Emperor's Royal Explorer and one day she does actually get this chance because the famous explorer River Shara actually comes to her village and Kamzin and everyone else expects him to choose her sister Lucia to go on this expedition with him. However things happen and it turns out that Kamzin's going to be the one that is going to be leading River on this expedition to climb the toughest mountain in the Arias called Raksha. Because of this though, Kamzin's sister Lucia decides to go on her own expedition with a rival explorer and so Kamzin's battling between these two things of following her passion and her dreams to become this royal explorer but also trying to make sure that her sister is safe and out of danger because like I said, Raksha is the hardest mountain to climb. It's unforgivable, there are a lot of magical spells and wards there to keep people from climbing it and so yeah she's trying to discover the truth about herself and the people that she's with as well as trying to climb the deadliest mountain in this world. So yeah that's the best synopsis I can give without really spoiling anything. I'm really enjoying this book so far. It has some of my favourite elements such as dragons and magic and it also has a snowy setting which I do always love reading about so yeah I'm enjoying this one so much. The only thing though is that I've gotten to a point now where a romance is starting to make itself clear and to be honest I'm not too keen on it so yeah that kind of threw me off a little bit. I can see why it's happening and I can see how that would be a cause for arguments between some characters and it sets you up in a way to know that some characters are going to have disagreements, they might go their own ways. I'm not sure, this is me just speculating but yeah so far I'm having a really good time with this one and I'm finding it really hard to keep to the buddy read schedule because I do just want to read ahead. Saying that though I haven't read today's section of this book and I'm not going to just yet because Karis from Karis's Corner and I are actually hosting some readings for instance tonight on my channel which is so exciting. Karis and I first started talking around July last year. We ended up buddy reading a book together and since then we've just not stopped messaging and we've always said that we need to FaceTime or WhatsApp or whatever but we've not got round to it and so we finally decided it was time to host some live sprints and meet each other and just have a really nice chat. So that is actually happening later on today. It's happening at five o'clock and I think it's about half four now. So I definitely need to get ready. That is why you're in this setup for a change. But yeah, I'm so, so excited to chat to her and also to you guys who are gonna be there in the chat. It's such a nice feeling being able to chat in real time. I know I always say that and it's getting pretty repetitive by now, but it truly does just make the experience such a lovely one. I am scared though because we have moved the time so that the live show starts at five o'clock at night, mainly because there were some other sprints happening at seven which is when we plan to do the sprints and we thought just so that everyone can be where they need to be and for people to switch between them if they wanted to we were going to start a bit earlier just so that people could join if they did want to. Saying that though I'm a bit scared that no one's going to show up because like I said we're starting at five o'clock on a Friday and I feel like by that point in the week you just want to sit down and chill and not really think about anything or do anything so I'm scared that people will come home from work and just 
not want to bother with sprints. Hopefully that's not the case though, hopefully there'll be quite a few people there that we can chat to. If not, it'll just be Karis and I chilling and reading. So it's a good scenario either way, but yeah, there's always something in the back of my head when planning live sprints that people aren't going to show up. But yeah, hopefully people do. I am going to start off by reading this book on the sprints. I'm not sure if I'll just read today's pages or if I'll try and read a little bit ahead, just so I have some leeway with what I want to read this weekend. If I pick anything else up though, I will obviously update you guys. But this is just going to be the book that I read for now. I will also leave the live show link down below for you guys. It obviously will have been by the time you guys are watching this, but if you do ever want to read with Karis and I, then please feel free to click the link down below. I know it always helps me to have some reading sprints on in the background now, whether they're live or whether they've been during the week and I've missed them and want to catch up or something like that. It's just nice to be able to chat to people or hear people talk to each other and then have a set time to read. I think it really does help me to pick up my book and stay focused for that amount of time. So yeah, please click that link if you're interested in watching the live show. I know we have chatted a bit and we do want to make this a weekly thing if we can, so definitely let us know if you'd like that. I will just quickly say though, we do update everything on Twitter normally. Obviously now I can post on YouTube in the community section, so I will try and post about these things there. This one was quite a last minute thing because of the time issues and that, so I didn't give a lot of warning for people to join, but hopefully people will be here. If you want to know when we're doing sprints in the future, please follow my Twitter account. It's always linked down below for you guys. I feel like that's all I have to say now, otherwise I'm going to ramble on for too long and I'm going to be late to the live show. I'm not sure if I'll update you guys tonight because I will probably be quite tired and I'll want to spend time with Tom. But for now, I'm going to sit down, join the live show and hopefully get a good chunk of this book read. Good morning everyone. It is currently Sunday morning so I don't think I've updated you since my live show with Karis. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who showed up. We were a bit unsure if people would show up because the timings were a bit funny. We did announce it quite last minute even though we'd planned it for around a week. I think because we noticed that there was another live going on at the same time we decided to change the times in that last minute. But we had such an amazing turnout. I had the best time. Honestly guys it was just the most wonderful night. I'm not sure if I've said it here before but this is the first time that Karis and I have actually spoke face to face and so we had a lot to say. And so because of that we didn't actually start sprinting until like an hour into the live show and then after that we chatted again for like almost an hour. So I'm very very sorry about that. We are doing more sprints next week on Karis's channel so please subscribe to her channel. Her content is absolutely amazing and yeah I think we'll be alternating between her channel and my channel every week. So mark your calendars every Friday around 5pm we will be going live and doing some reading sprints and I just cannot wait because like I said I had the best time. We also had some really nice conversation with the people in the chat as well so again thank you to everyone who came, who chatted, who sent us a message. It truly does mean the world and it just makes the whole experience so much better. I honestly can't remember what page number I was on before the sprints but I know that I did read about 120 odd pages during the live which is really really good. I have actually just finished this one so I watched a couple of live shows last night and I did watch a few lives this morning morning. I hopped into Joe's for a bit and then I went on to Maddie's one just because I really wanted to get this finished and when Joe's reading sprint stopped I hopped onto Maddie's to do a sprint then 
as well so I wasn't stopping myself from reading. This one was such a weird book for me. I absolutely loved it when I first started. I think the first 200 pages were honestly amazing and then after that it all started to go downhill unfortunately. There was a point in one of our lives earlier on in the week where I mentioned that I wasn't keen on the romance that was starting to make itself clear. I didn't really see the point in it. It was quite sudden because obviously these characters are going on an expedition. They haven't met each other before. They haven't really been spending that much time together. Obviously once you're on the expedition you're spending 24 hours a day with these people so I do sort of get it but once again it just wasn't really investing enough for me. I wasn't fully committed to the romance and I just did not think it was a necessary thing. Also, from about the halfway point onwards when things started to get a lot tougher, there were a lot of things that happened that were extremely convenient and made it possible for the characters to just continue on. Bearing in mind, they're meant to be climbing the deadliest mountain in this world, and yes, they do face some obstacles, but again, they do seem to find a convenient way out of it all the time, and that just lost its credibility for me, to be honest with you. Characters came together at certain points where, again, it was just convenient, they needed to be together in order to help each other out and stuff and it just sort of threw me off which I'm so annoyed about because like I said the first 200 pages were definitely a high four star maybe even a five star for me and then the last half of it was closer to a two stars for me which is absolutely crazy and I never thought I'd say that about this book I've heard nothing but good things about it and it is just my type of thing as well I think it's also the fact now that I have been reading more adult fantasy and more high fantasy books and so I'm used to the complexity of those and so well Whilst this is perfect if you do want a quick YA fantasy read, the quality of it just fell flat for me. And so for that reason, I think I'm going to be giving this one a three stars, which again, is not a bad rating. It was a very, very fast read, but like I said, the second half did let it down for me and that definitely did bring the rating down. At this point now, it's very clear that I have failed Polathon. I did have, I think, five or six books on my TBR and I've read one and I haven't even started any others. Because of that, I've decided to put the Polathon books aside and just focus focus on my own TBR. This is still a polar fantasy book though so technically if I do finish it today by some miracle it will count towards my polarthon page count. But that one is Stealing Snow by Danielle Page. This is a retelling of the Snow Queen and because of that I feel like it's one I'm going to fly through. I'm definitely getting Frozen vibes from this and Frozen is one of my absolute favourite films, Frozen 2 in particular. But yeah this one has always intrigued me. It's been on my shelves for about three, four years now and I've just never picked it up. And so I'm really committed to picking this book up today and finishing it off in this vlog. I am just going to read you guys the synopsis because I haven't actually read The Snow Queen and so I don't really know what it's about in a way. So to save us all the confusion of me trying to give you a very incoherent synopsis, I will just turn to this. So it says, First kisses sometimes wake slumbering princesses, undo spells and spark happily ever afters. Mine broke bail. 17 year old Snow has spent her life locked in Whittaker Psychiatric but she isn't crazy. And that's not the worst of it. Her very first kiss proves anything but innocent when Bale, her only love, turns violent. Despite Snow knowing that Bale would never truly hurt her, he is taken away, dashing her last hope for any sort of future in the mental ward she calls home. With nowhere else to turn, Snow finds herself drawn to a strange new orderly who whispers secrets in the night about a mysterious past and a kingdom that's hers for the taking. If only she can find her way past the iron gates to the tree that has been haunting her dreams. Beyond the tree lies Algird, a land far away from the real world, frozen by a ruthless king. And there too await the River Witch, a village boy named Kai, the charming thief Jagger, and a prophecy that Snow will save them all. This edgy reimagining of the Snow Queen by New York Times best-selling author Daniel Page begins the epic story of Snow's rise to villain, queen, and ultimate once upon a time heroine. That just sounds absolutely brilliant. I cannot wait to dive into this book, and like I said, hopefully I can finish it out today. It's not looking likely though, because the Six Nations have actually started yesterday, and if you don't know what that is, it's a rugby competition between Six Nations who are Italy, France, Wales, Scotland, England and Ireland. Today my wonderful country Wales is playing against Ireland and that should be a really good game so we are definitely going to watch that this afternoon which will take away a lot of reading time. I do also need to go to the shop really quickly. I'm in desperate need of some cat food and I really just need a few bits and bobs anyway so that will probably take about an hour and as always I do have a lot of uni work to do so we'll see. Like I said I am giving myself until the end of this vlog which should be 
the end of Monday night. I definitely need to get it up by Tuesday. And I honestly think that is very doable. If I stay committed and actually take the time to pick this up, then I definitely think that I could finish it in one day. If I'm lacking in motivation though, I will just put some reading sprints on because they do definitely help me to stay focused. I am going to end this clip here though because like I said, I have a lot to do and I do want to make a start on this one. Hopefully it's not too long until I update you guys again, but as soon as I have some thoughts on this, I will let you guys know. guys it's now the next day i obviously didn't update you yesterday i was meant to but i just got so so tired and i ended up going to bed very early so i've decided to sit down now and film this little update for you guys before i dive into my thoughts on the book though i have some parcels to unbox i am just going to take my glasses off though because there is a massive glare from the outside light which is a bit strange but just to save it from being distracting i decided to take them off but yeah once again i have broken my book bang ban <laughs> i had a really good plan behind this though because i have actually listed some books that I want to get rid of on my Depop. A few people have bought things and it turns out that I don't have any of those Amazon boxes to send them in and that's how I normally send them because they're quite secure in those. And so I was sat there and I thought well it only makes sense for me to buy a book in order to get the box that I need to send off this other book. So I did that and I thought everything was great and then the book arrived in a massive box so now I'm not even sure that I can send it in this because this box is massive for one book so I thought I was being clever and my plan failed completely so that didn't work out for me. Either way though, I thought it was going to be fun to show you guys what I've bought, so I will just open it. I'm always scared that I'm going to cut the book. In my defence, this is a book that I wanted to buy myself for the longest time. I've been so, so interested in it since I first heard about it, and that is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos. So this is the first book in the Mirror Visitor Quartet, I believe. I may be wrong, there might be more books coming out, but from what I know, this is going to be a four-book series. I feel like this was originally written in French. Yeah, so it was originally written in French, and then it has been translated by Hildegard Searle. I hope I'm saying that that right I'm sorry if I'm not and I've heard nothing but good things about this so I'm so excited to finally have it in my hands I will just read you the description of this though because off the top of my head I don't know exactly what it's about I'm the type of person that will hear people talk about a book and just from other people's reactions I will add it to my wish list most of the time not even paying attention to what the plot is about just the fact that it made people feel a certain way so for this one it says a mix of awkward misfits and misunderstood genius Ophelia cares little about appearances or or other people's opinions of her. She possesses two special gifts, an unrivaled talent for reading the past of objects and the ability to travel through mirrors. Her peaceful, if somewhat dull existence on the Ark of Anima is interrupted when she is promised in marriage to Thorn, a taciturn and influential member of a powerful clan from a distant Ark, the cold and icy Pole. Ophelia must follow her fiancé to the towering city of Sitter Celeste when nobody can be trusted. There, in the company of her inscrutable future husband, Ophelia slowly realises that she is a pawn in a political game that will have far-reaching ramifications not only for her but for her entire world. Lose yourself in the world of the arcs and in the company of an unforgettable character in this French runaway hit by the debut author Christelle Dabos. The first instalment in the best-selling Mirror Visitor Quartet, A Winter's Promise introduces readers to a remarkable heroine and to the richly imagined universe of the arcs, floating celestial islands governed by the spirits of immortal ancestors. A fantastical story of intrigue and suspense, A Winter's Promise will find fangs among readers of Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials series, Victoria Aveyard's Red Queen, and N.K. Jemisin's The Broken Earth series. Well, you guys know that I absolutely love the His Dark Material series by Philip Pullman, so that just intrigues me even more. I really want to dive into this book as soon as possible, but we'll see if that happens, because I know if I start this book, I will want to buy the rest of the books in the series and continue on. But yeah, even though my plan failed, I'm so, so happy to finally have this in my collection. It is such a stunning book, and it definitely sounds like my cup of tea. And then next up is something I definitely 
definitely shouldn't have bought but honestly I just couldn't help myself and so the book or rather books that I bought are these stunning paperback editions of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. If you've seen my most recent book haul you'll know that I bought a lot of Tolkien books at the start of last month and all of those books were specifically for a readathon. They're ones I've always wanted to get to, they're expansions on the world of Middle Earth rather than just the core series but you know me and you know that these are my absolute favourite books of all time. I love collecting different editions of them and these are always ones that I've had my eye on. I've put them on so many of my wish lists and again none of my family members want to buy it for me for Christmas or birthdays or anything like that and whilst I was browsing the other day this was actually on sale so it was meant to be £35 and it was down to 20 and like I always say I cannot resist a bargain. This is staring me in the face. It's one that I've had on my wish list for about three or four years now and I finally bit the bullet. I do think that the main reason I bought these though is because I have the Silmarillion and Unfinished Tales of Numenor and Middle Earth in these editions. I do have a bookshelf dedicated entirely to Tolkien and his works right in front of me and I just know that these would look amazing up there and especially with my other books in these editions. I will just take this out of the plastic though to show you guys properly. There we are. So I have just taken it out of the plastic and wow these books already look stunning to me. I will pull them out of the box though and show you them individually. So the first book is The Hobbit, then we have The Fellowship of the Ring, then The Two Towers and lastly we have The Return of the King. Another reason why I bought these stunning editions is because I do really want to annotate these books. The books that I already have are very very expensive copies and I do want to keep them in pristine condition and so I bought these with the intention of annotating them and writing in them and just making notes and illustrations and things like that as I'm reading. I think it'll be such a nice experience because I've never really done that for these books before. I do have The Hobbit on Kindle and on Kindle it is very easy to highlight passages that you like and things like that but I just feel like sitting down and annotating a physical book will just be a lot more personal and I feel like it'll just be the best experience so yeah. Kind of a justified purchase but not really. Could have waited till I bought these but there we are. <laughs> right getting back to my thoughts on the book. I don't have it with me to show you guys it's downstairs and I can't be asked going to get it but according to Goodreads I'm 57% of the way through. I think I'm just over 300 pages that might be wrong I can't quite remember but yeah it started off so well. I did watch a couple of reading sprints yesterday. I watched Joe's in the morning, Maddie's in the afternoon and Jade's in the evening. I was like joining most of those though so I was only there for like one or two sprints except for Jade's which I was there for quite a while and that's basically how I managed to read that much. Saying that though I I think it was a mixture of the book itself and other things going on that made me not want to pick it up all the time and finish it in one sitting. I don't think I've mentioned it here but Tom and I actually have a new puppy. I am making a whole video about it which is why I'm not mentioning it here at the minute but you will soon see her in my videos so click the subscribe button if you do want to see some more puppy content. Anyway getting back to the point, the puppy was playing up, she was being very hyper and we needed to keep an eye on her basically because she does get up to some mischief. And then the book itself, there's just something that I'm not completely vibing with. The start of it is very much the same as the start of Alice by Christina Henry where our main character is in a mental institution. People are trying to keep her sedated and one day something happens where the main character finds out that they're not really meant to be there and so they sort of break out and find their way into this other world. That was very similar for me. I don't know which book came out first but the fact that I have read Alice it was just very jarring and I kept drawing back to that book and making comparisons and because of that it did throw me off a bit. Not only that I I do have some notes on my phone so just get ready for this. <laughs> So the notes I've written are actually quite funny because I did write these just before falling asleep last night as they were fresh in my mind. So I am just going to read them as I've written them and it says, Convenient. Finds out that she's from a magical world but she can't master her powers. Literally two days later she thinks she can take down the king's servant by using magic. And the king in this book is the enemy. He is the most powerful person to be alive. He has all types of magic and this whole world is under his spell. And yeah, the main character came in, had two days of training and all of a sudden she was like, no, I want to take this person on because what they're doing is horrible which fair enough but like you need some training and even in the training sessions she can't really master anything like things happen when she's angry that forces her to bring out this magic inside of her but then she can't just control it by herself and so when she like ran into the situation thinking that she was gonna beat this person and get what she wanted I was just kind of cringing a little bit to be honest with you. Then I've put brushes over things and moves from one place to the next without any background information or context. Yeah that's the thing that I found where one minute 
it will be in one place and something is happening and then the next chapter was someplace else and there's no mention of the characters that were in the last scene or how they progressed from that scene to the next it's just very weird and i don't know if it was just me missing things but i picked up on it quite a lot i would be reading and then i'd be like okay but what happened to these characters after the events of this chapter and it wasn't mentioned it was just like the main character moving from place to place and then the author kind of forgot to tell us what was going on so again another thing that threw me out of the story i felt like we had a lot of information missing that could definitely help us believe in the world and the characters and their relationships with each other and because of that the next thing i've written <laughs> has kind of made me laugh this is one sentence and it just says also a weird love triangle you guys know me i'm not too keen on romance in my books i just love a good fantasy plot and amazing character development i'm not too keen on people adding in romance just for the sake of it and that is definitely what is happening here again it ties into the issue that there's no sort of context and we don't have information readily available to us and so our main character is in love with someone and that is basically the reason that she escapes this psychiatric institute she crosses over to this magical land to find this person and in like the next chapter she meets a boy and then they kiss and now the main character is thinking oh i love this guy but i also have feelings for this one and i'm like how you literally met him two days ago you found yourself in a magical world where you have powers and yet you're thinking about a guy that you've never met before I don't know it's just a bit off for me it started off quite strongly I did like the start of it but as it's just gotten further and further along I feel like the author is just trying to squeeze in all the important information but she does that by leaving out very important things I'm not gonna say too much more about it now though I know this has been quite a negative review I'm trying to make it a bit more light-hearted but I will never ever lie to you guys and this book at the minute just isn't it I am determined to finish it today though I mean I've read 60% of it now I'm not gonna stop I probably won't update you guys until then though because I I don't want this vlog to be too long I don't want you to have to hear me talking for too long because I know that can be very annoying but at the minute it's sitting at a two star for me which is honestly shocking I never really give books two stars because I only tend to pick up books that I'm genuinely interested in so this is very very strange for me like I said though it's not set in stone I am going to finish it out today and see how it all plays out see what happens I do think it's a standalone as well so after finishing it I can give you some coherent thoughts and maybe more detail on certain aspects of the book but for now I am gonna leave you here and I will update you guys once I do finish it. Hi guys, I'm finally here to wrap up this vlog. So I've literally just finished Stealing Snow by Danielle Page and this is a two star book. I really didn't enjoy this one. I think the author was just trying to put way too much into one book. Like I said before, we did skip from one place to the other without much of an explanation. Characters would just pop up randomly here and there to help out in certain situations and there was no explanation as to how they got there, why they were there, or anything like that it was just really really jarring and then the ending the last like 30 pages or so I was getting really concerned because obviously the book is finishing and nothing was really going on and then all of a sudden everything happened at once and then the book finished again I have an issue with the whole magic aspect in this the main character has some powers and I've said it before she didn't know how to use them she literally came into this world had a month to do what she needed to do according to a prophecy and so realistically she should be training every single day up until then to master her powers and she doesn't do that she gets about two days worth of training goes off tries to attack the king's men runs off somewhere else and then at the end of this book all of a sudden she can wield this magical power and use it against the king who has had years to master his power and he obviously controls everyone he is genuinely the strongest person in this world and yet this i don't even know how old she is but this young girl comes in never been to this world before hasn't really trained to use her magic and she just sort of completes everything that she needs to complete it's just really not believable. I wasn't invested in this. Another element was that there's actually like three different love interests in this. I know at the start I said there was one or two. Yeah, there's actually three. I don't think this main character knows what love is or anything like that. She just goes around kissing people and then says, oh, all of a sudden I'm in love with him. It's just not a good time. I feel like, again, trying to fit too much into one. It really wasn't needed. And I was struggling so badly to pick up this book and just finish it out. I'm so annoyed because the premise sounded absolutely amazing you can see at the start of this vlog how excited i was to read this and yeah this is probably one of the worst books that i've read in a while saying that though this is my personal opinion of course everyone takes something different out of books you might love this it's just that i personally didn't so yeah definitely don't let my review put you off if i'd have read this when i was younger i probably would have loved it it's just the fact now that i read so many books and this plot just didn't do it for me it had too many elements in it too many convenient things were happening and a lot of information 
and was just skipped over. So putting all those elements together, this book does get two stars from me and I will probably be unhauling it very soon. I'm really sorry that this has been quite a negative vlog, which I didn't think it was going to be. I had such high hopes for both of the books that I was going to read during this vlog. Unfortunately, both of them did just fall flat for me, which hasn't happened in a long time and it's weird that both of the books were books that I read during one weekend. I'm hoping that that hasn't put me in a reading slump now though. Like I said, I was struggling to finish that book just because of everything that was happening. I wasn't invested, I didn't really care, but it was past the point where I felt comfortable DNFing it because I had spent so much time reading it that I thought it was best to just finish it off. Please let me know if you've read any of these books down in the comments and if you have, whether you agree with my thoughts, whether you disagree with them. I know Chloe, who I was buddy reading Even the Darker Stars with, had the same sort of thoughts and opinions as I did, so it would be really interesting to see what other people do think. I am going to close out this vlog here though because it's been quite a negative one, which is not something I like posting, but then again I'm not going to lie to you guys about my thoughts and opinions. I am going to be 100% truthful and transparent with you guys. I feel like there's no point in lying about liking books if you really didn't because it takes away my credibility as a reviewer and I just don't want to be recommending you guys books that I didn't personally enjoy. On that note, I am going to end this video here. I really do hope that you enjoyed watching this even though it was more on the negative side. Sometimes though I definitely feel like that's a bit refreshing to watch because I feel like people tend to stay away from negative reviews sometimes so I hope you got something out of it at least. If you like this video don't forget to click the like button as well as the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you so so much for watching it truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye! And just to finish off Polython on a perfect note it is actually snowing.